Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a Chinese fantasy teen film called Underachiever. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In the opening scene, some military men spy on a car, zooming through the desert. They are after something that the driver possesses. They chase after the man on their motorcycles and eventually stop him. But the case they were desperately looking for is empty. A flashback shows us that the man had found a rare black crystal in the desert. He knew bad people were after it, so he put it inside his water bottle and buried it somewhere in the sand. The leader of the group is furious, but even the man cannot tell for sure where he buried the valuables. Following that, we are introduced to the protagonist of the film, Zhang Tianxi. He is a 22-year-old high schooler who has repeated the same class thrice after failing three times for the past consecutive years. Tianxi is known as the most familiar face of the school, as no student has been in the school as long as he has. His best friend, Shang Fei, is also the same, but has one up on Tianxi since he has only failed twice. The duo is the certified loser among its classmates. In one of the classes, Tianxi dozes off and falls off of his chair. Everyone laughs as the teacher calls him an invertebrate before punishing him. He is frequently looked down upon and bullied by his classmates, but he still has hope that one day he will pass the university exam. The source of his motivation is one of his sweet classmates named Xiao Yan. She gives him candy every day, encouraging him to do better. She is also one of the few who doesn't laugh at the jokes made about him. Because of her nature, many guys are in love with her, including Tianxi's biggest bully, Liu. He is good at studies and sports, which makes him think that he is better than everyone else, especially Tianxi. He makes advances at Xiaoyan every chance he gets, but she is not in the least interested in him. Moreover, she seems to only hand the candy to Tianxi and Shang Fei, which makes him furious. He takes out his frustration by bullying Tianxi, calling him an orphan and urging him to close the books even though he is studying. Shang Fei comes to his friend's aid, pulling him away before things escalate. At night, Tianxi returns to an empty home and we find out that he has no family. He lives on government welfare programs, which makes his life even more difficult. He studies until midnight, determined to pass the exam this time, but the thought of failure doesn't leave his head. After that, he goes to a nearby desert to collect garbage and sell it for some extra money. To his luck, he finds the hidden water bottle with the crystals inside of it. On his way back home, he bumps into Lu and Xiao Yan. Lu makes fun of him, as always, and shakes the garbage bag. When the bottle falls out, Xiao Yan picks it up to return it to Tianxi. At this moment, a surveillance camera catches her face with the water bottle. Somewhere else, the military group that had been looking for the bottle sees the footage and targets Liu and Xiao Yan, who are the only ones visible. Back at home, Tianxi opens the bottle and finds the rare black crystals inside. He doesn't think much of it though and goes to sleep after putting the bottle down by his bed. Unbeknownst to him, the crystal is working its magic and giving him special powers that he is not ready for. The next morning, a group of thugs is bothering Xiao Yan. On their way to school, Tianxi and Shang Fei see this. Shang Fei wants to run away, but Tianxi cannot leave her alone with the thugs. He stops the gang from harassing her, but is in turn beaten up by them. They tear his notebooks and forcefully make him eat one of the pages. By the time they're finished, Tianxi's face is covered in cuts and bruises. At school, the teacher is informed about the fight, but instead of taking action against the thugs, he puts the blame on Tianxi for causing trouble. Xiao Yan and Shang Fei take Tianxi's side, but the teacher just dismisses the matter and asks them to forget about it as well. More problems add up. When Tianxi walks into the class and is hit by a duster to his face, Liu is mad at him for skipping his whiteboard rubbing duties. To his annoyance, Xiao Yan takes a stand for Tianxi and cleans the board on his behalf. During a lecture, Tianxi accidentally drops his phone to the floor, disturbing everyone. Fed up with his behavior, the teacher asks him to come to the front and solve an algebra problem. To Tianxi's surprise, he seems to understand the problem. He efficiently solves it in front of the class and surprises everyone, including himself. Liu tries to undermine his intelligence by saying that the method he used is wrong, but the teacher claims that it's just a bit complex. 
Suddenly, Tianxi remembers that the paper he was made to eat in the morning consisted of similar mathematical problems. He puts two and two together and figures out he might have gained a superpower of memorization when he eats a paper with some form of information on it. After school, he tells Shang Fei everything about the revelation, but Shang Fei doesn't believe him. Instead, he thinks that Tianxi must have studied the problem and forgotten about it. Still, to test if he is telling the truth, he makes Tianxi eat a paper with all the fighting techniques that he has been learning in the karate class. On his way back home, Tianxi again encounters the thugs from the morning. The leader is the comb man, who fixes his hair before and after every fight. He challenges Tianxi to stand against them, unaware that Tianxi knows everything about fighting, like Bruce Lee. The fight ends in only a minute as Tianxi defeats all of them with his outstanding techniques. The comb man vows to never mess with him again. The next day in class, Lu throws a duster at him again, but this time, Tianxi catches it without even looking. Shang Fei finally believes that he might have superpowers. This gives him an outstanding idea. Their school's basketball team is going against their nemesis school's team. Hence, he makes Tianxi eat pages from a book about basketball tips and tricks. In the evening, the match is about to start, but since Liu is the team's captain, he refuses to take Tianxi in. Shang Fei begs him, insisting that he is a great player, but Liu would rather give up his position than let Tianxi play with them. Moreover, Tianxi's shoes are old, and no one has shoes his size that he can borrow. The match starts, and their team begins losing immediately. Against the hulks of the opponent's school, they are proven to be weak. By the end of the first half, they haven't scored a single basket, and are losing by 26 points. During halftime, Xiao Yan brings Tianxi a pair of shoes from her brother, who has the same shoe size as he does. Liu is mad that no one on the team played well. He insults his teammates, which in turn causes an internal fight. As punishment for Liu, the teacher replaces him with Tianxi. Initially, Liu doesn't mind because they're losing the game anyway. But then, Tianxi starts scoring one basket after another, surprising everyone. As time passes, he catches up to the opponent's score and gives them a tough time. Liu makes his best friend play badly, so the team won't win the match, and Tianxi won't get the credit he hopes for. But Tianxi manages to score a difficult basket and impresses everyone even more. After the match, he is the talk of the school. Meanwhile, Liu, who is used to being the best at everything, is furious that someone like Tianxi is coming for his throne. His friend reveals that he heard Tianxi and Shang Fei talking about something strange that involved papers. The duo realizes something is wrong and decides to look into the matter. The following day, Tianxi returns the shoes to Xiao Yan, thanking her for always being there for him. She had always believed in him, even when he was considered a loser. Now that he is one of the popular ones, Tianxi thinks he owes his success to her. They walk home together and begin dating starting that day. In the following scene, we see them hanging out by the sea, singing together, and falling in love with each other. Liu is furious and mixes laxative into a drink and hands it to a girl to deliver it to Tianxi. He wants to humiliate him in front of Xiao Yan, but the plan fails when the girl hands the drink to the teacher instead. The teacher does some questionable things during the lecture that day, but the students just laugh it off. As the days pass, Tianxi eats more papers instead of studying, but he soon discovers that the paper memory is taking up space in his head, and he is beginning to forget events that happen in real life. If he continues using the power of the magical crystal, he might one day forget who he is. However, he is scared that if he returns back to being a loser, Xiao Yan might not want to be with him anymore. That afternoon, the leader of the men who are looking for the crystal finds the comb men. He threatens the group to tell him where Liu and Xiao Yan are. After school, Liu insists on walking Xiao Yan home, even though she refuses repeatedly. Suddenly, someone attacks them from behind and takes them to the gang's hideout. They are asked about the crystal, which they, of course, know nothing about. But as the men explain to them what the crystal is, Liu realizes that Tianxi must have it. He tells them about him and gives them his phone number. Somewhere else, Tianxi tells Shang Fei about the memory problems he's been facing recently. He reveals that he doesn't want to use the crystal's power anymore. Shang Fei is disheartened because he has grown to like the new Tianxi, but he understands the decision. 
Just then, they get a call from the kidnappers, who threaten Tianxi to come to the hideout with the crystal if he wants his friends back alive. Tianxi knows that even after he hands them what they want, it is likely they will not spare the group. Hence, he eats a bunch of papers with different fighting skills to teach the gang a lesson. Before leaving, he also hands Shang Fei a purple gift box to give to Xiao Yan if he doesn't return from the mission. In the following scene, he walks into the hideout at gunpoint and hands them the bottle. But the leader is furious to find it empty. He fires at Liu and Xiao Yan to retaliate as Tianxi begs him to let them go. Liu panics and starts running, causing a shootout. He gets shot in the leg and hides behind a bunch of boxes with Xiao Yan. The antagonist manages to get to Xiao Yan and holds her hostage against Tian Si. Tian Si, in turn, attacks him with a knife, but after a bit of struggle, he is stabbed in the abdomen. The leader has complete control over the situation when the screen dips to black. A few days later, Liu is in the classroom, bragging to his classmates about how he saved the day like a hero, even though he was shot. Somewhere else, Shang Fei gives Xiao Yan the gift box that he was given by Tian Si. It consists of the towel she used to help Tianxi during the basketball match, the candy wrapper, and many little things that he saved from their time together. Just when we think he didn't make it out alive, Tianxi appears in front of the two. A flashback shows us that even when he was severely injured, he took out the knife from his abdomen and killed the leader. In the final scene, Tianxi and Xiao Yan hug before the trio walks away while engaging in a cheerful conversation. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.